Hello friends, I'm Ernie and this is PC Sound Legacy. But today's video is not about PC sound. It's about this rare 19 years old HEP graphics card. The XGI Volari V3. And why is that? Well, that's because of Nathan from Pixel Pipes. He announced GPU June 2 and as I am also very interested in the legacy of PC graphics, I'm very happy to be part of it this year. But before we go into the details of this card and doing some benchmarks, let's talk about its manufacturer XGI. When I first heard XGI, I was thinking on these Octane graphics workstations that revolutionized special effects in Hollywood movies. But this was SGI. XGI is a complete different story and it all began with Trident Microsystems. In the era of 2D VGA adapters in the early to mid 90s, Trident offers cheap and adequate performant graphics ICs, and they gain a relevant market share with it. The main competitors were Cyrus Logic and S3, and they held up quite well, but Trident always focused on the lower end and lower cost side of the market. When the HEP bus and powerful CPUs with several hundred megahertz were available, 3D gaming's become a big thing, and the demand for powerful 3D accelerators. This was the rise of 3DFX, ATI and NVIDIA who perfectly served this demand. Trident didn't. Yes, they also made a few direct 3D compatible HEP cards, but these lacked heavily in performance and features and soon tried and disappear into faculty, at least for PC graphics. The last attempt on graphics ICs was the 3D image and blade lineup for the HEP bus. And it was no success. Most OEMs and PC builders rely on ATI or NVIDIA already at this point. So they lost the race and focused on their alternative business segments. And because of that, Trident reorganizes in 2003 and sold their graphics division in the same year. XGI was founded in the very same year in 2003 in Taipei. Based on two former graphics divisions, Trident and SES Silicon Integrated Systems, they aimed for the stars and wanted to reach NVIDIA and ATI in case of performance and market share. Their Volary lineup was divided into the low-end V3, based on the never-released Trident Blade XP4 and the Valery V5 and V8 that held SIS division technology. With a retail price of below $50, the V3 was even cheaper than Nvidia's FX5200 or the ATI Radeon 9200SE. Now let's take a look on the technical specifications before we get the card running. All three cards in this comparison were released in 2003. The Volari stands out with the smallest process size, the slowest GPU speed and the lowest count of transistors as well. We also see that the Volari has a less complex architecture in case of pipelines and shaders. It is hard to find architectural informations for the Volari but as it is based on the Trident XP4, I researched this as well. And I read that part of the pipelines are shared instead of being independent. This leads to a low transistor count and therefore a smaller die size, lower production costs and an impressive low power consumption. But also to limitations in performance I guess. Now let's add the retail price of the cards for comparison. The Volari V3 was offered for $50, the FX5200 SE for around $90 and the Radeon for around $75. So on paper we expect the V3 being the slowest and the FX5200 the fastest card. But will the benchmark confirm this? Now let's get the card running. For test system, I chose the best period correct system that I have. An Linux B 2800 Barton system with 1 GB of RAM running Windows 2000. The 
in the following scenes I will show you the benchmarks. If you want to skip directly to the results, you can jump in directly. I have linked the position in the video description for you. We start with Quake 3 Time Demo 1 in N24 by 768 in 32-bit. This is a classic benchmark for OpenGL performance. As we can see, performance isn't great and less than I expected to be honest. But worse than the frame rate is this kind of rubber band effect that makes this absolutely no fun to play. Let's see if it helps to reduce the resolution to 800 by 600 and 16 bit color depth. Well, it's better, but it's still annoying. Maybe the card will perform better in direct 3D? Therefore we try Unreal Tournament 99, the best and most fun shooter of all time if you ask me by the way.
helpful. Let's see if it's playable in 800 by 600 and 16 bit color depth. Well, it's not really. We just have a small map here and just two characters. And the card is at its limits already. So as you can see, playing older 3D games at lower resolution is possible but not really fun. Imagine its performance in more modern and more complex DirectX 8.1 titles. Now let's take a look on the benchmark results. I run all three cards with Craig 3x Demo 1 in 1024 x 7.68 in 30-bit color depth and everything set to high. As we can see, the Volari was quite slow in comparison. The FX5200 was more than twice as fast as the Volari and the Radeon was nearly twice as fast. But that's not all. As mentioned, gameplay wasn't fun and there are definitely frame drops below 30 frames or even lower. I thought it could be an OpenGL weakness of the card, but as we can see in Unreal Tournament 99, the performance gap between the cards was even bigger in Direct3D. You might wonder why I tested the Nvidia card with OpenGL here. In Direct3D it didn't get over 60 FPS so I suspected a VSync issue that I wanted to avoid. In 3DMark 2001 SE, Nvidia and ATI were on par with nearly 4600 marks and the Valari again with just 2700 marks in a very inferior position. But the gap is not as high as in Quake or Unreal Tournament. So the Volari clearly is not a gamer's card. Nevertheless, disappointed in 3D performance. On the other hand, the card was cheap and its very low power consumption make it a great card for a silent and power saving living room multimedia PC. You can play older games in low resolutions and low details as seen in Colin McRae Rally in 800x600 and 16 bit. But at this XGI card is tried in Slatishy somehow, it sure is an interesting item for some collectors. Maybe you have your own experience with one of these cards? Then I'm very interested to read your comments. I hope you enjoy my GPU June 2 video. And if so, please leave a like and consider to subscribe. Ernie, PC Sound Legacy.